Yes, in our previous video we introduced the idea of a matrix um, and the terminology around it, how we describe the size or order, um, etc. So today we want to have a look, um, again it will be a fairly brief video today, at um, how we use matrices to represent information. So we essentially know that a matrix um, is basically a table of data. And so any time that you would, um, you know, record data in a sort of table format, um, that could be represented as a, a matrix. Um, and I know that seems a little trivial, but in terms of thinking about the back end of how big sort of databases and things operate, the computer systems behind them, um, matrices are, are used heavily um, in that process. Um, so, you know, it, it's not so much that, you know, well, why would I choose to write the numbers as a matrix when I could just write them as a table? Um, it, it's more the, the back-end processes um, required to, to manipulate and work with data, um, which is a, a really big um, thing in our, in our modern world, um, the volume of data being dealt with. Okay, so um, we'll obviously deal with very simple situations. Um, but um, here we have a table of data um, and in it we have recorded the distances between three uh, local townships and we could record that information in a matrix. So we've clearly got nine pieces of data in a three by three format that can simply be transformed into a matrix. In this instance we have um, a really clear symmetric matrix. So remember a symmetric matrix ignoring the um, leading diagonal but um, we have a mirror image either side of this leading diagonal um, and that makes sense in this particular situation because we're talking about distances between three townships so this number up here for example that's the distance between town A and town B um, and this number here is the distance between town B and town A and that's obviously the same value in this particular case given um, what we're dealing with so um, it's uh, you know it, it's no surprise in this instance that what we have is a symmetric matrix um, sometimes we choose to label um, the columns and rows, and in fact, that's quite common in VCAR exams that they will, you know, tell, they'll label sort of outside here that this is town A and town B and town C, and this is town A and town B and town C. So you can clearly um, interpret the information out of the matrix. Um, example one, let's have a look. So the following table represents the goods delivered from a warehouse to individual stores. So to store A, there were five bicycles, 12 helmets and six tyres delivered from the warehouse. Um, from the warehouse to store B, seven bicycles, two helmets, 15 tyres. And from the warehouse to source, store C, um, 15 bicycles, seven helmets and zero tyres. So we want to, in part A, present the information as a matrix with the stores in the columns. Okay, so um, we've clearly got nine pieces of data in a, in a three by three format. So we're going to need a 3x3 three three matrix. We want the stores in the columns. So we're going to have column A, column B, and column C. And we're going to have um, bicycles, helmets, and tires. Uh, so uh, store A is 5, 12, and 6. Store B is 7, 2, and 15. And store C is 15, 7, and 0. Uh, it is, says present the information as a matrix with the stores in the columns. We've done that. What is the order of the matrix? This is a three by three matrix. Construct a row matrix to display the number of helmets delivered. So remember a row matrix is simply a matrix with just one row and we want it to be a row with the number of helmets delivered. So that is going to be uh, essentially that information there. So number of helmets going to be 12, 2 and 7. Part C, construct a column matrix to display the numbers in the table relating to store B. So again, store B, essentially going to have that column matrix. Um, and so it will be uh, 7, 2 and 15. Then it says, what is the order? Okay, so this is, oh sorry, and part B we asked what the order was as well. Okay, so the order is in this case 1 by 3. The order in this case is 3 by 1. What does the sum of its elements tell you? So the sum of the elements, the elements being each of the numbers in the matrix, would be 7 plus 2 plus 15. 
7 plus 2 is 9, plus 15 is 24, okay? And thinking about what that tells us. So remember, the numbers in this particular column matrix are relating to store B, okay? So this tells us that 24 items, okay, combination of bicycles, helmets, and tyres, 24 items uh, were delivered to store B. Okay, one other um, uh, key um, application we sort of look at in this module is representing uh, network diagrams as matrices. So network diagrams consist of a series of numbered or labelled points, um, which are called nodes, um, joined in various ways. And they can be used to represent lots of different things which in which there are networks, so um, literally road networks or friendship networks, airline routes, electrical circuits, um, all sorts of other things where there's connections and relationships between um, different people, different places, um, or whatever it might be. So here we have um, a network diagram that shows the road network between four towns, and this information can be represented in a matrix as shown. Now, it probably should be labelled, um, and as I said to you, most often in um, BCAR papers and exams, the matrix will have um, the labels, but we can also interpret what the labels should be based on the numbers here. So we're seeing a number of interesting things. We've got a leading diagonal of zeros in this instance, and that makes perfect sense if we think about it, because what the leading diagonal is representing is the number of roads from town A to town A, or from town B to town B, or from town C to town C, or from town D to town D, and obviously there are no roads that go from A straight to town A. So um, that makes sense. And then we've also got symmetry, and again, like um, the earlier matrix we looked at, that makes sense because uh, this number here, for example, is the number of roads from town B to town A, and this is the number of roads from town A to town B. And so therefore, that's going to be the same. So we should see that symmetry happening. You know, you can pick any number. We've got the two here, and that's because between town B and town D, there are two um, different roads. Um, so representing the information in the matrix. So example two, the figure shown opposite represents the number of routes between four towns, represent the number of routes using a matrix. Okay, so if we've got four towns, it's going to be a four by four matrix. I'm going to label it just so I can be clear about what I'm doing. Okay, so again, we're going to have that leading diagonal of zeros. No roads from A to A, no roads from B to B, no roads from C to C, and no roads from D to D. Okay, then let's think about from A to B. So we've got one road, two roads, three roads that go from A to B. And so obviously that will be the same as B to A. I'll just move that zero down. Um, then if we think about A to C, uh, so where's C out here? One, two. Okay, two roads from A to C. And so therefore two roads from C to A. A to D, uh, just the one direct road from A to D. And so one road from D to A. Uh, B to C. So B to C is one road around there, otherwise everything goes via another city. So one road from B to C, one road for, therefore from C to B. And uh, B to D, we've just got the one road. B to D, B to D, or D to B. And lastly, C to D. So from C to D, we just have uh, the one road there. And so there is our matrix uh, representing the routes between the four towns. Um, so that's all we really want to play around with today, representing information in matrices, interpreting, interpreting information out of the matrices. Uh, the work today is from exercise 11b.